Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 1, Episode 18, Thoughts. This episode is called Providence. Another episode I love. Spoilers for the MCU leading up to and including this episode. No spoilers for anything MCU after this episode. The top link in the description box will enable you to donate to the site after Strikers. I implore you to do so. And then there are some links to videos that help explain why this is such an important strike. So, let's dive in. So, yeah, Reyna in her cell is making flowers out of paper. And when Ward gives her a flower dress, she's, like, legitimately moved, you know. And, yeah, at first she has no idea. She legitimately thinks Ward, you know, he's a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. So, you know, she doesn't trust him before that. And, yeah, John knew that it would take a gesture to convince her. And... <laughs> Yeah, so Sky has, you know, she feels like a real agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. now. She's, you know, she walks in, she's got some intel, you know, but yeah, she's, she tells Phil, you know, I made a list of, you know, trustworthy S.H.I.E.L.D. bases. You know, it's, it's a low number, but it might rise. So, what's it like? Seven? Three. And the hub. Including the hub. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Yeah, and Reyna meets Garrett, and she is legitimately shocked that the clairvoyant isn't actually psychic. And she, you know, yeah, she confronts him. You know, she was a true believer. And, yeah, they have the elevator chair, which I you know, always love to see that in spy fiction. And, yeah, they talk about, you know, is an order from Coulson still an order? Because S.H.I.E.L.D. is in, you know, is in shambles, so isn't it more like a request? And Fitz is struggling to fix the... Which, you know... <laughs> I feel bad for you. Know, don't don't gang up on him. But yeah, although you know, to be fair, you know, Trip didn't know that. You know, I don't. I don't. Yeah, he didn't hear Simmons say, the the you know, make the exact same suggestion. Very cool to see Adrian Pazdar. You know, big fan of his. Loved him on Heroes, and I'm one of the people. Who actually remembers the? I can't believe I'm blanking on the name. I'll have it momentarily. Um, the House of Frankenstein. So yeah. Um, let's. See. I yeah I I doubt they would cast him just for those few seconds. So I look forward to seeing more of him. And sounds good. That does not sound good. <laughs> and yeah, Odyssey Protocol. They always have such cool names for the the different aspects of Shield. And yeah, you know, Colson doesn't trust Trip, but Simmons does. You know, I, I wonder if he is just going to replace Ward now. I'd like that. I, I, you know, good character, good performance by the actor. Let's see. And, you know, she points out maybe it should be a democracy. And, you know, which it's always been... I understand that it's sometimes necessary for military and you know, spy operations and such, that there is, you know, enforced authority, but sometimes it leads to, you know, sometimes the people at the top make horrible decisions. And it is inherently anti-democratic. You know, there's no... The people, are, you know, the lower you are on the, the rung, you know, you... you the less say you have, which, you know, at least hypothetically, when a, when a democracy works, so, you know, not America in the last 40 years or so, 
you know, it doesn't matter who you are, you have the right to vote, and, you know, yeah. Let's see, yeah, and, and, you know, Sky points out erasing their identities is the nuclear option, and it is undoable, and she is surprised that Ward is so cool with it, and, you know, he has the great line, it's not the first time my identity has been compromised, which... Yeah, the audience knows what he's talking about, but of course she does not. I like that Brett Dalton has managed to kind of darken his performance now that we know he's a Hydra agent. <clears throat> and yeah, Garrett and Ward talk about, you know, Ward having fallen for Sky. And, yeah, I, I like the, or wait, or is that later in the episode? Anyway, I like that the, that the um, what was it, GH325 is referred to as Jesus Juice. Let's see. And, you know, earlier Garrett said that he's a sweet talker, and, yeah, he sweet talks Reyna managing to talk her back from, you know, she was pretty much, she probably wouldn't have helped them if not for significant convincing by him. And now we know why they called it the fridge, because that means they could have the, the very clever line, we're gonna raid the fridge. Yeah, or say, we're gonna raid it. You know, the fridge, we're going to raid it. Some, something like that, but yeah. And, yeah, so apparently Fury sent coordinates through the, you know, Coulson's badge. And <laughs> Garrett doesn't like the, the Hail Hydra arm gesture, you know, which gives me a perfect opportunity to, to point out that Lindsay Ellis, uh, you know, who I I acknowledge that not everything she said and done was, like, perfect, but I really disagree with her being cancelled. Uh, you know, apparently she does, you know, she's now on Nebula, which, you know, I don't know. I guess it's possible I'll get at some point. I do not have it right now, but... You know, she routinely referred to, you know, she would she would do the movement and say, hang glider instead of hail hydra, which, yeah, I mean, it does, that is what it looks like. So that's very funny. And, yeah, Ward explains to Reyna the, the tactics he used on the, the shield team. And May wants to take Coulson's weapon, and he is furious with her over the, you know, recent revelations. Have you even read Moby Dick? Have you? That's not the point. <laughs> and, let's see. You know, I... I I do really appreciate Trip bringing it up because, you know, Moby Dick has significant importance. You know, obviously, you know, if you ask like intellectuals, they're going to be like, "Oh, it has," you know, blah blah blah. But if you ask a middle schooler, they'll say it allows me to say the the a dirty word in class. And yeah. You know, Ward, Ward and Garrett do the prison, you know, posing as as prisoner and, and, yeah, someone who took the prisoner. And the, you know, attack by a helicopter, which, I mean, we know that those were real bullets because they put holes in the glass. I don't know how it's supposed to have been safe for, because it was apparently part of the plan. Because Garrett says, you know, the, 
How did Hydra follow you here? How, how did Hydra know you were here? We told them. Which is a, a killer line. That's that's true. Let's see. Yeah, and, you know, the... Yeah, welcome to the toy store. The rockets were empty, which is a, a great... Because we did think that in the earlier episode... Was it the Gravitonium? I think it might have been the Gravitonium we we thought we saw being shot into space. Uh, you know, might have been a monkey. So that's how they get their kicks. But, yeah, they, they kept it around, and now Hydra has it. And... Let's see. Yeah, and, and you know, Coulson reveals that... They, you know, he bet everything on, you know, he's he's basically stranded the plane there, you know, because he was so certain that it was, yeah, you know, he, he bet everything on it, basically. And, you know, later on, Koenig says, you know, oh, you can, you can take it. You know, but bring in the plane. I've got a great parking space for it or something. And we don't see it, but presumably Coulson says, do you have any fuel? Because we're out, but, you know, we don't need to see that. You know, they trust each other by that point in the episode. But yeah, you know, Coulson gives a great monologue. And then, you know, you know kind of kind of shouty parts of it. And then, you know, goes, uh, I'm sorry, I just really want an Emmy. And, yeah, turns out there is a facility there, and it is, you know, it is legitimately clever that, yeah, you know, he, you know, there was a piece of metal flying through the air. Of course, the, the thing's going to shoot at that, you know, you know, and, and before you say, oh, well, you know, it's, it's tiny, though, it's, it's not like it could be a helicopter. Let's keep in mind what tiny stuff can do in the MCU, including on this show, you know, so just, yeah. Um, let's see. That might be. Yeah, and we learned that the the hard drive, you know, Sky, has made it so that she's the only person who can access it. So that's very clever, and it is, of course, you know, I don't think I appreciated it until this episode. That's of course why Ward suggested we should probably scrub and back, you know, back up and then scrub. Don't do it the other way around, and yeah. It's because that meant he could end up with the hard drive and they would have nothing on it. And that is, I'm, I'm very excited to see how, you know, what's going to happen next. How, if, if they actually are able to, to access it. And, yeah, great to meet Koenig. Um, always love to see Patton Oswalt. I, I've never been unhappy when he showed up. It's just, he's he's always entertaining. And, yeah. Let's see. I quite like him geeking out and fanboying over Coulson. He's like, it's such an honor to meet you, you know, shaking his hand. And, you know, and you are going to get one of, one of these badges, you know, very soon. The rest will receive them on a case-by-case -case basis. Just, yeah. And, yeah, he, he gets Coulson alone and tells him, you know, he's one of the few people who know Fury is alive, along with Cap and Koenig. Are you threatening me? Absolutely. Fury's orders. He means business, doesn't he? <laughs> And, yeah, Garrett gives Ward 24 hours to, to get the information out of, you know, to, yeah, to get Sky to unlock it, I guess. Yeah, some, something like, or, or hand over the code or something. And if not, he has to kill the entire team. So, it's, yeah. And, yeah, Garrett beats Ward so that it looks convincing. And, yeah, the post-credits has Ian Quinn. I, I quite enjoyed the line, you know, you almost ripped my tongue out, and now I wish I had. You know, yeah. 
and yeah, he gets the, the gravitonium back and does indeed say thank you, just as Garrett wanted. And yeah, so let's see if there's anything interesting on IMDb trivia. Right, and the Agents of Nothing, that's a reference to a, I don't know if I want to give away spoilers for something comic, so, but there's a, a apparently a comic thing that, yeah. And... Oh, yeah, and someone, of course, looked up where the coordinates, the, the, yeah, because they are real coordinates. Oh, and, and, yeah, Garrett mentions Johnny Horton, who is apparently, uh, who is actually from the comics. And, yeah, this is the first appearance of Koenig outside of comic books. Oh, he was, yeah, he was a howling commando in that. And, yeah, Adrian Pazdar, you know, in addition to appearing on Heroes, he voiced Tony Stark Iron, slash Iron Man on Avengers Assemble, Ultimate Spider-Man, Lego Marvel Super Heroes, and Phineas is Ferb's Marvel Special. So, yeah. And, yeah, it's the first live-action appearance of Glenn Talbot, so very cool. And... Right, and, and the, yeah, the thing with the, the barber chair that is an elevator that is from the, um, the shield in, in the comics, they would enter their New York base like that. Very cool. Yeah, I think that's everything I have for this one. Um, yeah, I, I quite appreciate, you know, it feels like a, a very logical, you know, this thing of, you know, Glenn Talbot wanting to talk to, yeah, to get some information from them that feels like a very logical, uh, you know, consequence of the the Hydra twist, and now the you know our team is actually on their own separate. You know, earlier episodes they would always have to come up with some reason why the rest of Shield can't you know help with a mission. And here we just have, you know, which is going to make it more convenient for the writers, I feel. And, you know, I'm not saying that I would, I don't want, to, you know, episodes where we're just constantly dealing with different parts of, of S.H.I.E.L.D. without it, you know, focusing on our team. I think that is about... See. Yeah, and I'm I'm very excited to see what you know. Of course, Sky still trusts Ward, so yeah. What exactly is going to happen? You know. Yeah. Uh, and and yeah, and the rest of the team as well. They they haven't been given any reason to to mistrust Ward. Right, uh, I think it's kind of cute that uh, Sky, you know, obviously, you know, going out into the snow, everybody has to, like, really dress for it. Nearly everyone has, like, fully black, you know, clothes for it. But Sky has a purple, you know, like, wool... Uh, what do you all call those again? Do you call them hats? Not a native English speaker here. Um, yeah, you know, and and Simmons has one, I want to say it's like blue or something, so just, yeah, it just, it felt appropriate for the characters. And...
city name. I think, right, uh, yeah, I, I like that the, you know, there's windows in the base because it's, you know, it makes the isolation more bearable. And let's see. Right, and Garrett describing himself as an artist, a con artist perhaps, but an artist all the same. And the the real ward hates the Patriots, <laughs> which I just realized is probably because he's unpatriotic, you see. But yeah, Sky thinks that he does love the Patriots. And let's see. Right, and and yeah, Quinn whining to, to Garrett. Uh let's see. Right, and, and I liked Coulson saying, you know, I'm not going to hand over my weapon. You want to try and take it from me? And... Let's see... I think... Um... Yeah, that is it for this one. So yeah, looking forward to next episode, which should be sometime tomorrow. And until then, don't do not do the Hail Hydra arms thing. You'll look like a West Texas cheerleader at a pep rally. <laughs>